culture. They're citizens of the world. So when they see the opposition, the only opposition that can take her down, make a mistake in their mind, they go after him like the jackals that they are. What do you think about Trump's comments? WABC, Mike, your opinion counts. Welcome to the Savage Nation. What's your comment, please? Yeah, I'm a Trump supporter on everything else, but the comment he made about being a Muslim and could either hurt him and it could be his downfall. Trump forbid something happens in the States, if it's a terror attack, you know the media is going to, and the liberals going to spin it and blame it on him. And that can happen. Wait, wait, you mean because if a Muslim attack, wait, if there's another Muslim attack, they'll blame Trump? How? Somehow, somehow they would. Oh, in other words, they'll say they wouldn't have done it, but they did it because of him. And in fact, it's very clever. ISIS is liable to say they're attacking because of Trump. I see what you're saying. Yeah, with a little help from a Jake Tapwater, I'm sure they can get away with it. They ought to hire Jake Tapwater as a, as a PR agent. He'd do a better job for ISIS than he's doing for the American media. Uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. They could easily blame him. All right, my friend, Christmas gift goes out to you. Government Zero, still in the stores. Doing very well, thank you despite the media ban and the blacklist. Do you think this is going to hurt or help him? What do you think about Michael Savage being banned in Britain? What do you think about the fact that I said something on the show that you didn't even know? That the very few people who came to my aid and said this is wrong in 09 included Bill O'Reilly and Megyn Kelly. Did you know that? It's hard to believe. It can be found on YouTube. But I can't say the same for folks in the radio sphere. The only one who did was Laura. Ingram, she was outraged by it. Nobody else that I know of, maybe I'm mistaken. Say, why is that a big deal? Well, because <laughs> now look what's happening. They want to ban uh, him from from Britain. And he's not even he's not even running for office in Britain. Here's an interesting story from a very important man. The former commander of U.S. Special Forces in Afghanistan and Iraq. Now listen to who this man is. This is one of the top soldiers in the history of America. The former commander of U.S. Special Forces in Afghanistan and Iraq said that without the Iraq War, the Islamic State wouldn't exist today, according to an interview with the German newspaper Der Spiegel. I didn't want you to miss this. Did you hear this? General Flynn, General Flynn served in the U.S. Army for more than 30 years. He was stationed in Afghanistan and Iraq from 04 to 07. He said he regretted his role in the Iraq war and said the terrorist attacks on 9-11 led the U.S. to create disastrous military policies. He says that Bush, Cheney, and Colin Powell presented false intelligence about Hussein's weapons of mass destruction program and alleged links to al-Qaeda. He also highlighted the consequences of toppling Middle Eastern dictators, a strategy to continue with Obama's intervention in Libya. He said it was a huge error. As brutal as Saddam Hussein was, it was a mistake to just eliminate him. The same is true of uh, Gaddafi and for Libya. By the way, I said the same thing now for many months, and I'm not a special forces uh, commander. It's common sense. But Flynn concludes by saying the historic lesson is that it was a strategic failure to go into Iraq. History will not be and should not be kind with that decision. Did you, did you know any of this? He said, first we went to Afghanistan where Al-Qaeda was based, then we went to Iraq. Instead of asking ourselves why the phenomenon of terror occurred, we were looking for locations. This is a major lesson we must learn in order not to make the same mistakes again. Before his retirement, Mr. Flynn served as director, assistant director of national intelligence inside the Obama administration. Did you know that in the DEI? He added that the shift to international operations, such as attacks in Paris, Lebanon, Mali, and the attack on a Russian airline in Egypt, show that Islamic State has a developed structure in place. It's a very worrisome statement. It means that our foreign policy was all wrong. Bush was wrong. Cheney was wrong. Powell was wrong. The Iraq war was wrong. The Afghanistan war was wrong. And this is not coming from a flaming radical on a college campus. This man was the commander of special forces served in the military for 30 years. It's an amazing story. He said that we're too dumb. U.S. ex-U.S. intelligence chief blames Iraq war, poor strategy for the rise of ISIS. Back in a minute on the Savage Nation.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or Swiss America. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. You have no choice. That's all anybody's talking about. Now, one of the best statements about this, other than my own, is found on jihadwatch.org. <clears throat> and here's what Robert Spencer wrote. He said, I am no fan of Trump, but is what he said here really so outrageous? No one has some natural right to enter the U.S. Trump is suggesting a temporary measure, and in view of the intelligence failures involved in Tashfin Malik's passing background checks from both the FBI and DHS and the stated plan of the Islamic State to embed jihadis among the refugees, and the fact that two of the Paris jihadis were recent arrivals into Europe as refugees... It is prudent to call a halt and try to devise some genuinely effective vetting measures, although that will be impossible as long as Obama's policy of denying the reality of jihad continues. Spencer goes on. Most of our commitment to multiculturalism and diversity override any concern for national security. Excuse me, he asks, must our commitment to multiculturalism and diversity override any concern for national security? So he knows what he's talking about. He knows that the punks and cowards in the liberal media are just so glad to be able to pin the, the tail on the donkey and call um, uh, Trump racist and a bigot. They'd rather call him a racist and a bigot than call the two murderers who are Muslims murderers, racists, and bigots. Did you know that? Have you heard any of the liberals who are attacking Trump say anything as uh, angrily, angry? about the two Muslims who slaughtered so many last week, or the Paris murderers, have they said anything as nasty about them? Of course not. Of course not, because they're cowards and liars. So they save it for him. It's that simple. Andre on KSFO, you'll have the last word in this hour. Fire away. Go ahead, please. You have one minute. Andre, you're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Hey, Dr. Savage, I, first of all, I, I almost feel silly saying this, but I want to thank you for uh, speaking the truth and writing the truth. Uh, there's so many people in England that want the Queen murdered, they want the Islamic flag over the British Parliament, and they can't even imprison those people. But, you know, they have the goal to uh, you know, not allow you into their country. I think that's a That's of right. That's what happened to your England. They took the flag down, they surrendered a long time ago, and now they want to ban Donald Trump. Mm-hmm, that's where old Barry wants to take us. Welcome to the Savage Nation. So the Union Jack was hijacked by the Labour Party in Britain. It no longer flies in England. Soon the ISIS flag is liable to fly over Whitehall. Meanwhile in America, old glory is threatened to be taken down by uh, the fools who are running this country into the ground. What I found astonishing about the aftermath of Trump's remarks is that a complete loser failure like Johnson, who runs DHS, who had nothing to say about his failures and was not fired by Barry from Honolulu for his failure last week, instead comes out and attacks Trump, calls him a bigot, calls him a racist. It's insane. Multiculturalism and diversity are trumping our very survival. The fools who run this country are afraid to be called racist or bigots, and meanwhile they keep going over the cliff bringing in more jihad killers into the U.S. How many more attacks have to occur before we recognize that almost all of the attacks on America, I didn't say all, but almost all of the attacks on America are related to immigration and more specifically to Islam. Now let's talk about the fact of Muslim immigration, the facts of Muslim immigration. ISIS, the Islamic State, has told its operatives entering the United States to appear moderate. Read it yourself on Jihad Watch. The Islamic State has explicitly instructed its operatives entering the U.S. to appear, quote, moderate. 
don't wear a kaftan, don't carry a Quran, don't wear a beard, don't go to a mosque. Did you hear this? You don't know any of this. But those who study them know exactly what the enemy is doing. And those of you who say, well, you can't make it a religious issue. Well, as I said to you, it's not about a religion. It's about a p political organization, a political movement within a religion. The hatred is beyond belief. The hatred is beyond belief. These horrendous attacks on Americans are ongoing. And they're coming about when we have an administration that is bent over backwards to deflect any attention that is cast upon the Muslim community. It's shocking if I tell you that almost, almost without exception, there's been almost no outcry, almost no outcry from mainstream Muslim organizations after these attacks, almost none. It's indiscernible. I haven't heard any of it. They've justified it. In fact, one of the heads of care said that uh, we're responsible for it in part, blaming the victim. I didn't hear, uh, I didn't hear any screams about racism there. I didn't hear any screams about bigotry there from uh, the uh, Republican establishment or from the government media complex. So again, this thing about uh, the Muslim thing is that Trump, will, Trump said, Trump, will, Trump said, <laughs> that Trump said, I think we need to play clip three, the short version. We should play the long version, Robert, the whole speech so people can hear it for themselves. <laughs> because the speech, let's play the shorty first, clip three on the Savage Nation. What do you think about it? Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. We have no choice. We have no choice. Well, that's shocking. And of course, the, um, the Republicans, so-called, who hate him because they are milk toasts and have nothing to say about anything, including Ron, uh, Paul... Ryan, who you know is a plant of the Democrat machine. Chris Christie, whose blimp has lost its helium. Kali Fiorina, who, let's face it, has gotten nowhere. And others. You have to hear them in clip one as they rush to attack him more vociferously than he attacked the Muslims who did that travesty last week. Listen to one. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Paul Ryan. This is not conservatism. What was proposed yesterday is not what this party stands for, and more importantly, it's not what this country stands for. Governor of New Jersey, Chris Christie. This is the kind of thing that people say when they have no experience and don't know what they're talking about. Um, we do not need to resort to that type of activity, nor should we. Carly Fiorina. That overreaction is as dangerous as Barack Obama's underreaction. We're now going to violate the constitutional rights of citizens because of Donald Trump? I don't think so. Jay Johnson. Irresponsible, probably illegal, unconstitutional, and contrary to international law. Un-American. Republican Congressman Mike Turner. Well, not only is it deplorable, it absolutely shows that Donald Trump is not qualified to be president of the United States or hold any elective office. Senator Lindsey Graham. And you know how you make America great again? Tell Donald Trump to go to hell. Our country cannot be the victim of horrendous attacks by people that believe only in jihad. Well, there you have it for yourself. There's Jay Johnson of DHS calling uh, Trump's remarks on American, which I find interesting because I would say he's un-American. I would say that the entire Obama administration is uh, un-American. And if they want to start a House of Un-American Activities Committee hearing, I would love it. I'd love to see an investigation of this administration to see just how American they are. I'd like to see how American the DHS is. I'd like to see how American the Department of Justice is. I'd like to see how American all of the departments under Hussein Obama really are. They want to start throwing around the mud about un-American. Isn't it odd where un-Americanism just came up? It came up from Jay Johnson of DHS, a man who failed us again last week and still has his job. I guess that's very American when you think about it. To fail the American people and keep your job. That's quite American in this time. But what do you think about it as the issue? Let's go to WDRC, line four, Dan, WDRC Radio. What do you think about Trump's comments? Mike, I'm a, I'm a Trump supporter, but the one thing I have a problem with about that comment is he could be very well 
pushing Muslims to the is, radical Islamic faith. He could be pushing Muslims to hate Americans only because of the fact he's alienating everyone.